Hi. Hi. This is Caddy Jack's Knits, and I'm Jackie. And I am Sally. And Caitlin is hiking. And in the hills of Tennessee. Yes, it's her wedding anniversary. So congratulations, yes, happy Caitlin and James. James. Mm -hmm. And this is an odd, this is not a regular podcast, but this beginning part is about it's about life and life, life changes. Day and life changes. <laughs> yes. And mm -hmm. in particular about Sally and well, our whole family. So um, why don't you go ahead? Okay, because um, August 23rd, I woke up with chest pains and shortness of breath. And I went off to the emergency room fully thinking I was having a heart attack. Um, it turned out thank goodness not to be the case um, and on a CT scan to check and see that everything was okay with my heart and lungs they discovered an enlarged lymph node around my kidney and it is very very fortunate that they saw that and pursued that avenue because I wasn't showing any symptoms um, that would have alerted anybody uh, that I have lymphoma, basically. But it is lymphoma in its very earliest stage, thank goodness, due to this crazy little heart thing that I had. Um, so we're, you know, chemo starts on Tuesday, and it has been like a turning the world upside down um, for all of us. Um, I mean, I have much to be grateful for in the stage of my cancer, but it's still, whenever you use the cancer word, mm -hmm. it's scary and chemo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't even stand to hear you say it on here. <laughs> right, I know, I know, I know. Because, you know, it's, it's, um, it's hard because it's very, you know, if I get in there, early and they do this R chop they call it um, chemotherapy it is like a really 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 good chance that that's gonna just be zapping this cancer and I'll be done with it mm -hmm. um, so you know but I'm you know I'm older and I'm a little heavier and uh, you know a few other things against so I, I'm just really committed to doing everything I possibly can do on my part. And I have, I guess that, you know, the thing that I wanted to get on here and say is that the, the love and the outpouring of support that has come in since we've had this happen to me and our family has been overwhelming. And I just don't know how you can get through these things without the love and support of family, friends, community, because it just throws, <laughs> it throws everything up that you think is normal and you're okay one day and then the next day, you know, some news comes in that's not good. And, you know, mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. it's, it's a roller coaster. I'm relying on dear family who have been through this, on this road and are helping, she's, she's helping me to, look ahead and say it was horrible going through chemo but it's doable and you get to the other end and it's it's going to be better mm -hmm. so um mm -hmm. um and we're telling this because i feel like this whole podcast the way this podcast if you're a long time viewer you know it's kind of grounded in telling the truth and and not not like a reveal all telling the truth but our crafting and making is mm -hmm. woven into our lives and so if we just talked about the knitting all the time and didn't own what we were going through while we were knitting we wouldn't be i don't think we would be who so we are mm -hmm. no and um so uh i guess i'm going to tell the story the, the thing that we look for reassurance, I can tell you that here are two reassuring facts for me. It's this odd that I'm available, you know, that I'm not right. having to write sub teaching. plans. Mm -hmm. I'm not teaching. Mm -hmm. So I've been able to take mom to appointments and be here and 
I'll be able to be around, which is good. And I did not plan that. And when we were um, in the hospital, it was interesting because um, my sister and I have already lost our father to cancer. And, um, and we've already, I feel like I already lost my husband in a medical uh, situation, which I don't need to go into, but we've been through a lot. And, and there's always this like fear and unexpected. And, and then um, what we found, you know, you, sorry, I'm gonna it's say okay. it's okay, it's okay. But you have no ground beneath you and you just walk and then mm -hmm. the ground comes, it just mm -hmm. keeps mm -hmm. coming. Mm -hmm. And um, when I first heard the news, it was interesting, you know, we were in the hospital and I'd been in your room for a long time and I had to go get the car to get Sally, you know, cause she was gonna wheelchair down. And I- And the doctor had just told, told us, you, you know, and used mm -hmm. the, the lymphoma, oma mm -hmm. word. Mm -hmm. It was the mm -hmm. first time we'd heard that. Yeah. And, it... and I think I go into shock cause I was mm -hmm. also with my dad when he mm -hmm. was diagnosed and he was, it was said, you know, you've got X long to live and it was months. They didn't say that no, to mom. No, it was a different- But you know, your yeah. body doesn't know. So yeah. anyways, yeah. I get on the elevator and I'm just thinking, it begins, like when I go down off this elevator, it begins. And it was my first kind of stepping away from the cocoon of family and the cocoon mm -hmm. of the room. And I got off the elevator and I had my bag and my half wrap and it was sticking out of the bag. And I was walking down the hall and then I saw this woman and she's a beloved yoga instructor of mine. I haven't been practicing yoga, but she, <laughs> She, I used yeah. to go to mm -hmm. her and she was lovely and wonderful. And I said, Katie? And she looked at me and she's like, and I said, do you remember me? Of course I do. And she was talking to me and kind of petting my half wrap and making a little small talk like, oh, I see you on Instagram and everything you make is beautiful, which is very nice of her to say. Right, right. true. And, and she said, how are you? And I was like, I'm shitty <laughs> and and I and I just told her what had just happened and so here's the first person I ran into um if I'm making this all about me I'm no, sorry no 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 okay but um she said oh she's like I know she said I live with cancer she said you know I have to come in every three months to make sure I'm living with it and it just doesn't kill me. Mm -hmm. But she said, you're gonna be okay. You can live with cancer, you know? And mm -hmm. and she said that and she was kind of touching my shawl and she's like, yeah, I come. I don't know what her treatment was, but it's so cold in the hospital and you get goosebumps and everything. And she was, she somehow I just got the impression that she was cold and the universe just said, you need to honor this message. Mm -hmm. you know, the, sorry. Yes. <laughs> the very first message of it's going to be okay. You don't have to be like your father. You can mm -hmm. live with cancer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I said, and I just wrapped the shawl around her and I said, you take this and, you know, mm -hmm. and, and let it keep you warm. And, you know, and she was like, I can't. I was like, of course you can. And, and so my point isn't that um isn't that like i'm generous that's ridiculous that's not the point it's that the universe is generous and the universe will put even mm -hmm. when there's no ground beneath you it will keep offering mm -hmm. offering you toe holds and footholds and all of that kind yeah. of stuff and that's what i've been finding in in every encounter in this medical, this vast medical web mm -hmm. that's out there that unless you're using it, you have no idea it's there. Mm -hmm. And every every encounter has been like 
above and beyond. I mean, the people, they're so compassionate, so hardworking, mm -hmm. and so caring. Mm -hmm. From my hematologist, who I just feel like he's holding my hand all the mm -hmm. way through this, to everyone on the team, everyone that takes my blood, everyone that put my, you know, my port in. Um, mm -hmm. It's just been such a loving, caring, knowledgeable, empathetic web mm -hmm. and you know so and and people have come forward to me that so many people it's just been waves to my brain of going like oh that's right her mother died of cancer oh that's right there was you know cancer in their family and you know I guess what I'm trying to say is this is such a, a such a known from so many families that have been through this and we have also but when it comes to your own body, it's like, holy crap, this is really, I mean, it's, it's a, I don't know how to explain it if you haven't gone through it, but it's, it's a game changer. It's like, um, and I don't, I, you know, I think in my own creative world, that my creative being, I have just gradually, as these symptoms came on for what we now know as lymphoma, I made a quilt in the spring that if you follow my channel, it was my spool quilt and I made it with such passion and such joy and in such like, I was like on fire. Do we have it? It's on the sofa. All right. Okay. This is kind of the bookends of my, you know, the spool quilt. Is this the spool quilt? Yes, this is the spool quilt. And you know, there's, I don't need to go into the explanation of this quilt. This sure. quilt, I've explained it. I, you know, mm -hmm. follow my, um, my uh channel and you know i i did i think i did a whole okay. youtube on it okay but anyway the fact was is that it was you know it was a passion of taking these square you know making it into my own thing and it just like it flew off i mean it's like when you talk about something flying off your needles mm -hmm. like when you're really into it mm -hmm. and i was thinking about in terms of this illness um that over the summer, I just declined. I just like went into a, like, I kept thinking, well, am I, de am I depressed? Which I could be. Am I, you know, what's going on with me? Because I just got so tired and so deflated. And so, not, you know, like my appetite is zilch. And so just before, you know, the end of the summer in August, mm -hmm. And I've been working on, you know, I've been, you know, those of you that know me, though, I've been doing these like little circles for ever. I mean, I've been doing so many different renditions of them. And, you know, these are my last, this is the last bit of these individual I'm ones. Still just gonna show me this, um, so. But anyway, toward, you know, just before going into the hospital and what I told my doctor as my, you know, like he was taking the history and I said, I could not. I was trying to put the binding on this large quilt that I've been working on with these circles, kind of the culmination of all these like vintage fabrics. Um, and I had to just keep stopping and taking a pause and taking a break because I wanted it to be done just right so that it didn't, you know, wasn't wobbly and stuff. And it was so alarming to me that my creative passion mm -hmm. was affected. And then I, I just, that just kind of completely blew my mind. Mm -hmm. So I have to say, you know, when I, I, this is the quilt that I'm talking about. It's just, it's I just have a, I have a quilt, this. a quilt oh, top. Gosh. It's gigantic. I'm and I'm going to, the light is, yeah. but it is just absolutely stunning. It's huge. I mean, you it is. It's yeah. Huge. It's probably what I don't know nine. Oh, there. Ninety Jamie, inches. I mean, yeah. And I'm gonna need some help. Oh, I love it. To get so it backed much. and sandwiched and all that to where I can quilt it. And I that's also, just half of it, right? Yeah. Or is that a yeah, quarter of half. it? Yeah. Oh, okay. So. But I mean, it, it is just that was just. But what I noticed in doing this is that it just, <laughs> rather than being in the zen of the quilt, you know, which mm -hmm. I was, I was completely exhausted. It took such work to get that done. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 
so anyway, so that, you know, that's what I told him. Oh, so yeah. I said, I knew so some, beautiful. I wow. knew something was wrong, you know, like hell, mm -hmm. hell. But I am not one to go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. As my, you know, when they went Neither in, they said, I. boy, it's like, you know, it was 2018 when we have something in here. You know, I mean, it's not like I haven't been for mammograms and that kind of stuff. But I, I'm a healthy person. All right. We're trying to keep it not too medical. Okay. All right. We won't keep it medical. But anyway, so that was my beginning of the summer and end of the summer where my energy just went. And so and you I noticed it in your creativity. I, it was, yeah, that was the thing in my creativity. Um, that was the part that just really, I mean, Surprise I cried, you. you know, I mean, mm -hmm. that was like, am I coming to this point where I cannot create new work? Because, you know, the energy that it takes mm -hmm. to create something, not just the sewing, mm -hmm. but the what color is going here, mm -hmm. the decisions, all of that takes oh, so much totally. energy you know that with your sweaters totally. when you're really and you just it's such a big um deal and when you're in the throes of it like i was with the spool quilt everything was just i mean it was awesome mm -hmm. and this one was awesome but this one was much more i see my vision i i know what i want it to be mm -hmm. but the work it took for my hands and my head to work together to get that. So I feel like that is like, I mean, that quilt I will cherish. That is such a testament to what our, that our creativity is so intimately connected mm -hmm. to our life force. Yes. And I have um, a story about that too. And maybe Jamie, you'll get my yoke that's on the porch, if you don't mind, that's so sweet of you um, because when I went to New York, I was going to go to, you know, showrooms and, you know, I was going to meet, I was going to do a lot more than I did. I was going to do stuff for fashion week. And when yeah. I got the news, so I just, yeah. just kind of, it was like no floor. <laughs> yeah. And, right. and anyways, and I also at the time, I, I highly recommend, even though it's not going to come like I'm recommending, the book Sapiens is brilliant, and I read that book, and, but I was just, and I continued to feel like uh, every day bereft. I don't like just jump on the positive talk, <laughs> right, like yeah. I can't, like, oh, it's, like you know, I know all the positive things, but mm -hmm. I also just have to feel the grief and whatever the, you know. But this book, Sapiens, is brilliant, and it's a history of human beings, and I will say that it has a, it, it, it's written from a scale, an advantage, that definitely, I would say, poo-poo's the fluff of comfort in right, like right. my angels and things like that. Yeah, that mm -hmm. is not in that worldview. Mm -hmm. And those, and, and I, and here's what I'm going to say. I can say that those, both of those worldviews can coexist at the same time. They absolutely can. And I can utterly adore mm -hmm. the rational and the historical and scientific explanations about humankind. And I, can I say something? About yeah. That? The angel, I believe, you know, maybe my mother, maybe, you know, who knows, is what brought me awake at 4.30 in the morning and into the ER. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I talk about. In the, right. Intuition, yeah. mm -hmm. et cetera, the those angels. things. Mm -hmm. And so I was being very, I was just not feeling well, and I decided to turn to John O'Donohue. This has something to do with my whip. Mm -hmm. John O'Donohue, we've read him on the podcast before, was a Catholic priest and he left the church and he was a philosopher and a poet and he died young and he is exquisite. And, um, <laughs> okay, here comes my son who's sick. So we're going to pause yet again. It's okay. It's okay. We love him. He's bringing his dishes in. So this was, I just, this was on my phone. And I read it in New York. And it says this. And I don't know. You'll Maybe you'll find it related. Maybe not. But it says. And so my. Again. 
I will just say, it does talk about angels and you don't have to believe in them at all. You know, it could just be kindness. It could just be intuition, whatever. But it says, may you be blessed in your inner world and may you bring a kind gaze inwards with the eyes of your soul. May you see nothing impoverished within you, but see the great riches that await you there. May you learn to love your inner world with the eyes of your soul, and may you be given the gift of seeing the eternity that is within you. May your angel become a real companion to you in your life. May you learn that the secret and the sacred are sisters. And may you never blaspheme against the divine which is within you. May you allow the wild beauty of your invisible world to gather you and mind you and help you to dance in wonder. May your angel free you from the inner prison of fear, false identity, rejection, bitterness, or rule. And may the wall of your inner prison become the threshold of the new land of springtime, which is full of surprises, which have been dreamed and prepared by the great spirit because it loves you so tender. <laughs> that is so beautiful. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's why on the dock yesterday by the lake, the heron mm -hmm. that was just up there at the top of the, it came walking towards me 10 feet away and looked me in the eye. Mm -hmm. and said it's going to be okay mm -hmm. yeah and and so this is beautiful yeah so this project i oh. hadn't even started and i hadn't even thought about it or anything mm -hmm. and i went to um i actually changed my tickets to come early to see matisse's Mm -hmm. um, exhibit the red studio because my friend Emily said it was so beautiful and it really was so beautiful but mm -hmm. I also watched it like here was his collected works mm -hmm. or not his collected works it was, an, it was a painting of his studio and then all the images that were seen in that painting they gathered those paintings so Debbie and I went to this together so it was the red studio and then all the paintings within oh, the red wow. studio but one yeah. mm -hmm. and it was the history of this painting and and his insistence on listening to this inner voice of his mm -hmm. which 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 was I'm taking this finished work pretty much and redoing it and I'm painting over it red and this is the color that I've chosen mm -hmm. and red itself is is worthy of my attention mm -hmm. and uh, and it was rejected so fiercely and it was like when i saw the Cezanne exhibit which i can i'll talk about that in the all knitting portion okay. but it was really fun to see an artist's work collected rather mm -hmm. than just one or two pieces to mm -hmm. see a ton of it and oh, and tells even more of the story yeah and it was interesting because he even had a piece of Cezanne's that he himself bought but I'm I'm kind of digressing just to say that he created and worked in like the raw uncertainty, not in the not in the retrospect of he's a famous artist, hooray mm -hmm. him. No, he had to just paint into his heart. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, I don't know how else you have vision except by tending right, right. to your heart. Yeah. And and it was so I I of course as i said have felt so vulnerable and raw and it was just very very touching to see mm -hmm. and so we went debbie and i went to that and then we went to um do you knits birthday 10th anniversary, 10th anniversary. yep mm -hmm. I, and sorry okay um and i found this yarn and we went with with my friend Margaret and 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 I found this yarn and the name I don't know the name of I'll find I'll get a skein of the yarn mm -hmm. hold on just a second here's the yarn Beautiful. and you know I don't I've never heard of Lane Vendol before but it's beautiful 
and um, and it was called Eurydice. So of course I love <laughs> Eurydice, and I was just like, this is incredible, absolutely incredible yarn, right? And then Karen helped me match it with this um, mohair from, this is from West Green Loft Yarns and it's called Emma. And then, anyways, and I'm standing there holding the yarn and Margaret says, my spirit wants to get this for you. And and again, I just have, I, I'm, I, it's not about the stuff, it's about honoring the energy. So I said yes. And, um, and then I started working on this. And this is the Vera blouse. And she was formerly handmade closet, but she has a new name, which of course, I don't remember right now because I'm not remembering anything, but it's a lace yoke and I saw it first. Erica is, is making it. Oh yeah, I'm in the middle of doing a braid right now. Thank you for pointing that out because I'll drop my stitches. Um, I just knit on this I, I, while I was in New York and just this isn't, mm -hmm. this is hard lace. These, I, I mean, not the, the lace is very, um, undemanding in terms of the pattern itself but just creating these baubles was not easy so they they the rows took a long time and it just held me and when I would say I just kind of felt like a little orphan I just wanted to be home with my mother <laughs> And yet I was so excited for this trip and I'm not, I don't feel no, sorry no. for myself or I mean, you know, I, yeah. Debbie was so gracious, but I just left. I needed to leave early. And the day I left, I read the John O'Donohue thing and I went to this little um, French restaurant in her neighborhood called Bouvette and, and they just, you know, the, Wait, it was. It's a very lovely, lovely, exquisite fall New York morning, and you know, I had a pretty dress on. I had this to knit, and the staff just like gathered around and wanted to see the knitting, <laughs> oh, and like beautiful. kept like wanted me to stay, and would keep giving me more coffee drinks, and just was like, "You stay all day, and we'll watch you knit that." So <laughs> I felt. I mean, of course. Um, Debbie and Susie were loving and tender and sweet. That's a given, but it was fun it was like to have another layer, another layer, the mm -hmm. kindness of, of strangers. And so, you know, the kindness mm -hmm. of Margaret, the kindness of Karen helping pick this out, the mm -hmm. kindness, you know, and so this, I, as soon as I got home, I needed to not work on it. Cause I was working on my Rhinebeck sweater that Caitlin and I are wearing. But I wanted to show that anyways, mm -hmm. because it's connected. It's connected. Yeah. And then, you know, in terms of, I'll just say a pure knitting thing, my gauge is such where I have to stop the yoke early and I have to modify the pattern a little bit so that the translucent part is above my bra. <laughs> so I had to do some thinking mm -hmm. and like, like you, it was like, I can't, well, I can't think right now. Mm -hmm. So I set it aside and maybe today is the day. Finally, today is the day I can think about it a mm -hmm. little bit. Yeah, it's amazing how that mm -hmm. there's clarity. Mm -hmm. So that is a, a project that I'm working on. And I would say it already feels good just to talk about this mm -hmm. and not have it be a secret because I'm going to share one more thing. This is absolutely beautiful yarn. It's a new color from Sonder Yarn. This is the, the mohair base, and then this is the merino cashmere nylon base. And um, Sally wanted me to make her a hat mm -hmm. for, cause she's going to have hair loss. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing, which I can tell you guys, is what I just love this, it's beautiful. You know, I wanna do it and I absolutely hate it. Like I hate it 
and I don't want to do it. Yeah, because you don't want to be doing it for that reason. I know, and so mm -hmm. I'm. It's really, it's a really. What is that when you have ambivalent, or is it a conflicted? conflicted? Yeah, but it's there's a specific word for mm -hmm. that when you. It's it's very disorienting to feel like love and hate. Yeah, no, <laughs> you I'm, know, and like a, attraction revulsion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that's how I feel about. It. <laughs> right, I understand. Yes, but it'll be nice since I'm going to be going through this in a Wisconsin winter. But. But most people do like those projects, those sorts of projects with like ideas of love and healing. I mean, yeah. that's how mm -hmm. I've always done them in well, the past. Yeah. I've never done them with like, fuck yeah. you. I don't, I don't want this <laughs> to be happening. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> like, I know. so I don't know that that's the right spirit to knit it in, but, mm -hmm. and, but whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, do you want to quick tell them what you're wearing, by the way? Oh, yes. I, you know. I've got my soldatna on, and I haven't worn this for over a year now. Yeah. And I just, it's, it was the perfect October day. We went to the apple orchard. Oh, yeah. And I'm wearing a Caitlin Hunter sweater, too. This yeah. is, uh, okay. That's I can't I even thinking. remember anymore. It's the Kwegu or something uh, like that? Or Kwegu? Kwegu? Well, you know me. I, I yeah. get the first part This was it. just like hopelessly just mimicking the pattern exactly mm -hmm. oh except, it's beautiful except i made a mistake but i don't care so mm -hmm. this is somehow wrong but as yeah, right and and this is the way it was supposed to look mm -hmm. but uh it doesn't but i think this is fine and well, it's fun to be able to wear it it felt good being out in the world because like i said we went to the apple ward yes. lily and, and uh, jamie and poppy we'll, we'll and show you evidence yes and uh, because, as I said earlier, oh, we should be showing the apples, though, not the apple cider donuts, right? Keep going, Mom. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, well, they've been. I've had like a, oh, I would say loss of appetite. You know, that's supposed to come back when I start chemo, I think, because of prednisone. But anyway, so oh, it was just a fun apples. experience, and I w it was the cutest thing, Jackie, because. You know, I shouldn't say this about young men. You know, for me, it's like a, you know, 40 to 50 is a very young man. Um, but anyway, I was standing in the middle of this whole uh, indoor selling place with marmalades and donuts and apples and, you know, all kinds of Wisconsin. Can be a love story? Well, it was. I'm standing there with three mm. of these and my, you know, I've got mm -hmm. them stacked up. They are not heavy. Mm -hmm. but And this man comes up to me. You know, I was feel I was feeling beautiful. How's mm. that? I, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, that, and feeling, you radiate when you're feeling beautiful. I was feeling, feeling beautiful. beautiful. I love my hair. I'm into appreciating everything about myself right now because mm -hmm. I've gotten the word on what's going to be coming. Mm -hmm. And so there I was, standing in the middle of the place, just feeling beautiful, which is fun. Mm -hmm. um, and he comes up to me and he goes, "You need a cart." Mm. And I laughed and I said, "Well, I think a cart's coming. It's just going to sort of appear." Um, because I thought Jamie and Lily were looking for one. Mm -hmm. But anyway, and just a few moments later, he comes back with a box. And he said, here, you can put them in here. It'll be easier for you. I couldn't find a cart. And it was just the sweetest thing because I'm going, well, thank you. you know, even though the box with mm -hmm. the donuts was heavier. But it was just somehow <laughs> this, like, taking care of me. And I was mm -hmm. feeling like, oh, you know, I'm fine. I'm in the middle of the year with... All these people, they don't know what I'm going through right now today. They just know mm -hmm. I'm feeling good. Mm -hmm. And it was just sweet, that kindness, that mm -hmm. um, reaching mm -hmm. out. So Yeah. So we're not going to move right into, like, advice and preaching. No. But mm -hmm. I remember we, we'd, and we've said it before on the podcast, we knew this from when my father died, mm -hmm. you know, to say to people, it's good to see you instead right. of saying, how are you? Because right. usually you'd cry when people mm -hmm. would, <laughs> if you had to tell them how you were, you'd cry. So it's good to see you. So when I'm at Rhinebeck, you can say, it's so good to see you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you say, how are you all the time over and over, mm -hmm. I'll fall apart, you know? Right. And I don't know <laughs> I can handle that. Because yeah, um, Rhinebeck is kind of like threaded right in between 
I think it's treatment three and treatment four. Treatment mm -hmm. one and treatment two. Yeah. Is it treatment one yes. and treatment yes, two? Anyway, is. but it's threaded right in the center, so it mm -hmm. couldn't have been timed better. Mm -hmm. um, so Jackie will be back for the treatment mm -hmm. day of hanging out knitting She'll with me. She'll be losing your hair while she's gone. Well, you know, okay. we so, won't go there. Well, and so the other thing, um, which I think people, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I'll say to other people. It's, it's really hard to hear other people's bad news and know what to say. And and I know from, you know, teaching and stuff is you listen and you just go, oh, I, that must be hard, you know? But, but I think that tendency to fix or, or well, lighten their burden, that's something that I just know doesn't really work. Cause I think, what, but well, what does what work? What I'm thinking is, um, is for the most part, you know, like I, I've made my conscious decision of uh, this is just me, is that I'll be posting poppy pictures and quilt pictures and I may refer here and there because this is part of my life now um, with this going forward. But for the most part, I just want all of you to know, so many of you that are watching this, that your kind words of love, even just the hearts, the um, the flooding my channel, and you know, and Jackie's, and you know, Jamie's with the you know, we we love you, we're thinking of you. Yes, that just goes so yes. far. I mean, I just yes. really do feel like I'm floating on a cloud of love. Mm, and I nice. guess what the and you've accepted it, like yeah. And I what's feel, hard, yeah. yeah, what's hard for me is is people saying, oh, lymphoma, that's the easy cancer. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, my true. father lived to be 90. You know, and there's so many very, you know, and these are all encouraging, but it's, it's um, lymphoma covers a very vast array of different types of cancers mm -hmm. in there. And the one and it's I, cancer. And, and it's it cancer sucks. and it sucks and chemo. I haven't found a single person out there that says chemo is fun. You know, don't don't sweat it. It's no big deal. Mm -hmm. And so, but it's also I am so incredibly grateful um, for the people that are out there that have shared. I'm thinking of Mara Lisa. I'm thinking of the Knot House. I'm mm -hmm. thinking of people that we've known mm -hmm. online, people Kathy. that we've known Kath in our lives mm -hmm. that have said, you know, hey, this was hard, but I got through it, and mm -hmm. you know, and all that. And so those people have shared the path. Um, and it, it, it's, it is very helpful to know when I see people with their, their hair coming back, you mm -hmm. know, the, um, you know, and hair is, is mm -hmm. fortunately, like my, my niece said, it's the fastest growing cells. And so that's the first thing that goes this, you know, the treatment is hitting the fast growing cells. So, mm -hmm. um, it's all part of it. But anyway, I love you guys, and I do appreciate this. I want to do my, you know, on the Sally Journey Quilts um, channel, I'm going to try to, before chemo starts, to do an explanation about where my, or can I just say? Just I've say it. closed Etsy. Um, I've closed my Etsy account. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to, there are quilts that you've ever wanted. I have no... Um, problem with people DMing me at any time they see a quilt and go is that still available That's, well that, okay, you know, fine but or I can you'll be kind of busy but I'm going to be so busy right now that I just didn't want that hanging over my head mm -hmm. and I have I've just had the fun of taking some of the quilts that I've made and I want to go you know I've been giving people quilts that I I love that I've wanted to share with and I also recognize that I'm in a new a new way of looking at things and I really want to maybe do more writing mm -hmm. maybe do more you know mm -hmm. teaching if that makes any sense or mm -hmm. but I don't want to be making things for a shop mm -hmm. I want to be done with that part for now we'll never say never but it's um you can look at them too. yeah so these little things that I'm making Oh, I don't know. I just, I was sitting there and going like I have about 50 of them because that's going to be kind of one of my chemo things if I can use, you know, is to sit and stitch the binding down on these. Mm -hmm. As I realized we're going into the season, you know, there's always a season of giving. 
but these are going to just be gratitude gifts. These are mm -hmm. like going out to somebody that's kind to me at chemo mm -hmm. or whatever right. and just have a basket of right. them and give them away. Well, this is what people on this channel know and mm -hmm. what we know. It's, it's just so, this is like the whole story of your making has mm -hmm. been honoring the making of the people that came before you. And right. the people that came before you were not immortals. No. And no. so... No, that whole point about these little squares is I've been taking the things that were unfinished and trying to get them into a finished form that can go into this generation mm -hmm. of people to enjoy. So it is always that mm -hmm. absolutely awesome, terrifying thing that, that I will admit on this layer of the onion or whatever we're going to call it, I have no metaphor for it, I'm not... I haven't circled round yet. I am in, you know, denial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, but it was beautiful to see my cousin be so generous about her experience of, of chemotherapy. And she would not have been able to comfort you and have be that generous with you had she not suffered her own battle and had her own tips and and she said someone was there for, for her. her and it's a cycle mm -hmm. and and we and our ancestors mm -hmm. that and all of us makers well i, I mean we, I, grandma johnson died of cancer she you know i mean sure and when i talked about her and my and painting. i think we just live in this like mistakenly tiny little world of our head and our ego where we feel like alone and mm -hmm. um, and important and unimportant and on yeah, all proportions are all, all, all things along like the way. Yeah. yeah and mm -hmm. um and what so, this does is just knocks you on your it does it knocks you on your butt but it also mm -hmm. like i say i just i really feel like gratitude i mean gratitude is my daily word Mm -hmm. uh, I'm grateful for that whiny little puppy who just had her spaying um, surgery and has been just whiny, whiny, whiny because of her, you know, itchy stitches. Those of us that have ever had surgery know it's not, mm -hmm. it itches at mm -hmm. some point. But anyway, I mean, just grateful for my friends, grateful for the, mm -hmm. the October weather. My daughter's. And you had a dear care package come from a friend I did. too. Do you want to show that? Yeah, and I'm not, you know, what I'm planning to do is to wear this. This is wrapped with love. I mean, it is absolutely the coolest, most beautiful shawl um, mm -hmm. wrapped with love. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we are wishing you. Thank you. Thank you, yes. Um, so much love, so much, mm -hmm. you know, uh, joy in your making. And I'm very excited to see many of you at Rhinebeck, but also um, very, I don't know. Well, we start, we start yeah. Tuesday. Right. And also what I also realize when I, whenever I, Post, I like to be reminded again that there are very many people in the same boat mm -hmm. and the love and support goes out to you as well yeah, exactly um, exactly because there are many people in this community that yeah oh that's totally what I'm trying to get at right, maybe I'm not saying it is no. all of this isn't because I think that we want to unload on you no like it's the it's same important. way I write my poetry I write it and I go well mm -hmm. hmm that was raw mm -hmm. and then I hit post because I figure mm -hmm. it's true so it's universal right and right. so right. that's why it's not because you know that's that's why So All right, Jamie, we go. you want to come say goodbye to everybody? Yep. Come on in here and just put your... Hi. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. She's just been a, a dynamo uh -huh. picking up so much of the slack here. Uh -huh. I don't know what I'd do without the two of you. Uh -huh. You are my team. Well, we don't know what we'd do without you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.